Anjula, before I get to, you know, how you came with this proposal to globalize Priyanka Chopra, I want to ask you about your years uh, in England. I have read multiple conversations that you have given other journalists where you've spoken about how you couldn't relate to mass culture. You didn't see any shades of yourself in, in the popular culture around you. You alluded to the racism that, that, that engulfed you. What are your memories of those years when you were at the receiving end of that racism? Yeah, it's it's so painful, Barka. Um, I mean, from a very young age, from really just starting school, um, I grew up in a completely white suburb in England. Um, there was literally no families of colour but one. And um, I mean, it was incredibly painful. I'm, I was bullied every single day. Um, I was, you know, treated inferior. I just wrote about, I spoke at Parliament the other day and I talked about how kids were so scared to hold my hand because they thought my color was gonna come off that the teacher would tell them to hold my sleeve. Um, the teachers told me that, you know, Indians were, I mean, they didn't even call us Indians then, they called us Pakis. Like, they were like, Pakis are only good to run corner stores. Like, it was, you know, kids were so mean to me. It was, it was horrible. It was just really, really horrible. And then there was the rising of the National Front, which is, you know, the pre precursor for neo-Nazis. So it was very difficult. I mean, I think growing up in London for South Asians would have been very different. Um, I didn't grow up in London, so I just didn't have access to any anyone of color. Um, but what was very interesting to me, which was an observation I made very young, was I remember one day, there were, you know, there were four channels then, and I went home one day and there was this show that all the kids watched called Grain Chill. And um, I went home and everyone would watch Grain Chill and they suddenly had this Indian family, Pakistani family come on and I was dreading it. I was like, oh my God, what's this Pakistani family gonna be like? Of course, the father owned the corner shop uh, mm. in, this, in this neighborhood that Grain Chill was set and there was a daughter and the daughter had to be a virgin and the father saw the daughter in this, this, this show walking down the street with this white boy and decided to drag the daughter home and take her to the doctors to check that she was still a virgin. Mm -hmm. And true story. And the next wow. day at school, I was bullied so hard. Like the kids were like, is that what your dad does to you? Like, you've got to be a virgin. Like he, people bullied me so hard, literally every corner of the school. I ran away from school that day because I didn't want to be there. It was so, it was so horrible. And I remember coming home and thinking, I hate that show. I'm never going to watch it again. And how dare they do that to me? Like, I just yeah. remember thinking that show was responsible for the day that I had at school, which was so bad. And years later, you know, I, I was just like, I have to change this. Like the way we are represented in Western media, in any media really, you know, for young kids, it's so, it's so, it, I mean, sorry, it makes me very emotional. It's hard to talk about, but it's like how people decide to treat you based on what they see on television. These gross stereotypes, these horrible images of us, but by the way, not even written by us, like, you know, not created by us, not written by us and written by people that are not us and decide our fates in many ways. So yeah, yeah it's, it was, it was really challenging. I mean, what, 